back to the Skoda today. Have some repairs to do. Uh, we're getting the T4 out of there, so we hate me with the golf. Skoda is going in the workshop so I can work on it because the weather is wet. Um, I have a sill repair to do, arch repair to do. Obviously, I take the back bumper off to see what's happening there as well. On the other side, in the previous video, I did arch repair. I still have to do a bit of work on the sill. There's a bit of work there and along on the bodywork there. The rest of the cell is solid though, so that should be it. Um, again on this side, a little bit of bodywork there. And that's pretty much it. So I'm going to crack on with that. Right, I've taken the rear quarter panel bumpery bit off, um, cleaned up with a wet wipe. And it looks okay, there's a little bit of rust down here. Um, coming round to where the mudguard mounted on, it's rotten. So I've got that to replace. Um, I followed it round, there's bubbling here. So, oh, I'll put the light on. There's bubbling here, so a wee bit digging, so I'm going to have a patch to do there. Again. There. Pretty much the same as the other side, and there's a hole there also. So a wee bit additional welding to be done. Same as the last time, I've got a arch. Uh, yeah, I've picked up a arch. I've already pre-primed it in weld through primer. You can see there where I plan to cut it down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same as last time, really. I'm just going to cut it along here, where the worst of it is. Obviously, I'll come right up at this area. Uh, along here. Just try and catch it all. And then kind of come down at an angle. And down. Like that. And then... Work on the cell after that. Right, the Skoda is now in the workshop so I could get on with the repairs. Um, I've trimmed down the uh, outer wing that I was prepped. I'm just basically going to cut it right around here just now and feed that in behind. Right, I've got that bit cut out and the inner arch cleaned up. <coughs> As you can see, um, the inner arch could do with some repairs, but I don't have time to do that now. I'm just going to give it a couple of coats of uh, marine grade paint and then hope for the best. There'll be a job that I'll have to do at a later date. Right, there it is with the marine grade primer. I've also put in some holes, uh, pilot holes for the uh, self-tapping screws just to hold the inner arch in place, which I'm away to put in just now. There it is, um, self-tapper screwed in. I'm just going to tack it in with the welder now. There we are tacked in then. I'm just going to go ahead and weld that all the way around. There it is, welded in. One or two nice welds in there. I'm quite happy with one or two tighty bits. Like that. I find the weld through primer, I try and clean it back because even though it's weld through primer, it's still very splattery when you use it. But it's good for getting in the back of things. There it is with the weld clean back. Uh, and after that, I'm going to put some. It's fiberglass bridging compound, I'll show you it just now, as recommended by my mate Chopper. Here we go, that stuff. It's like a dewy, I'll show you it once I've got the tin open. Here we go, that's the stuff there. See, it's like got fiberglass mixed in it. 
and this helps to prevent any cracking. So I'm going to put that on now. There is the bridging filler applied. It's not got to be the neatest, it's just got to well, it's serving its purpose really. It's Right, there's that bridging filler stuff sanded back. I'm just going to give it a wee catalogue now. And there's my first coat of catalogue before sanding. There's the catalogue sanded down. And we'll go give it a wee paint note now. It needs an R coat of catalogue at some point, but that'll do for now. Not looking too bad. Right, we'll get some primer on that now. And there we are, with a couple of coats of paint on it. Primer. Right, I've got the afternoon off of work, so I'm back at the Skoda today. I have I cut this bit out when I was putting the arch on earlier um, just to make things easier for myself so I've got the silt repair here anyway and there's a bit to do there um, so I'm just going to make up a bit sell piece and I think I've got a bit to do at the other side as well so I'll make it a bit bigger so I could use it on both sides right so I've cut out my bit sheet steel which is going to go here and the first thing I have to do is I have to make this lip here. So I'm going to go ahead across to my H-beam uh, and start doing that. Alright, I've got my bit of steel clamped onto my H-beam. I've left about a quarter of an inch past the edge. I'm just going to bash that down the way with my hammer. Right, now that I've got that folded over I'm going to flip it around and fold it another way right I've got that clamped in again as you can see it's about a 10 mil lip that's over now and that previous turn that we put in it is pointing up the way I need to fold that down the way so I'm going to bash it on this edge just to get it going I'll show you that that's me just giving it a wee bash on that edge but just don't hit this bit just hit that edge there and it will form round neatly and then once it's flat you bash it in the way against the H beam and there that is folded over like that so I'll take that back to the car now and there's a little plate that we've made up and that's going to basically fit in there like that and then fold around the shape of the sill so that's what I'm going to do now I'm going to shape just clamp it in there or hold it in there self tack uh, self tack screw in it and then just bend it around the sill to get the rough shape and then maybe a wee bit of finesse in after that right there's too much spring in the steel to just fold it around the sill so you can kind of see where it starts to fold. So I'm back to the farmer's gate. On the farmer's gate, I'm just going to help it around there, not with a hammer or anything, just go use my hand just to help form it around that wee bit, just to take some of the spring out of it. Then the hand push it too far around so it springs round and like grabs the sill, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to do that now. It's just rough, and I've just done that. Fold it against there, and just pushed it down with my hand. I've not used a hammer or anything like that. Just with my hand, just to get the rough shape. Just now, right? I've got that fitting quite nicely to the sound now. It's not perfect, but it, it pushes in. But I've not made this long enough anyway. So that'll do for a wee patch on the other side. So I have to make up another bit that's going to be longer. 
problem is, is it has to reach right underneath here to get uh, the exist in and it's just falling a bit short. This is rotten. There's the original sill bit I've made and then I've made a bit slightly longer and longer that way. And I've also put the turn in for the bottom of the sill that needs to be cut roughly along here. So I've made it extra extra big. Um, basically folds in there, not too bad. It's not brilliant, it's not perfect, but it's not too bad. Um, the next thing is, is I need to kind of form it around here. I'm going to have to replace this inner. But I need to follow the, the shape of the arch down because obviously it, go, it covers the inner here around the cell. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. We'll put like a half inch turn on this side, right around there. Right, I need to put this fold in on this left hand side. You can see I've started doing it <coughs> on the H beam, but I can only go so far till it gets to the curve. Same here, and then it gets to the curve which obviously I can't fold round, I would need something to fold it round. So trying to find things that fit the contour and there's a bit of reinforcement steel that goes against the wee stream that runs at the curves and that is not too far away. So I'm going to dress that round there, just giving it gentle attach to the hammer just round this bit until it starts to form round. See it's starting to form round now. A couple of wrinkles in it there which I'll be able to bash out hopefully. Um, I'm going to give it a bit of heat with map gas and hopefully that helps it. Right I couldn't find my map gas but I've taken it as far as that anyway which if you look at that side reasonably flat it's hard to see, it's you see now we'll be able to set this on the H beam now and just batter it that way to flatten it out want to make sure the contour is still right against the cell right you can see I've got that pretty much where I need it pay attention more to the curve of the metal as opposed to the wrinkle because the wrinkle is to the inside so when I try it on, I can always straighten that back out once it's welded in. So try it in. That doesn't look too bad. So I'm happy enough with that just now. I'm going to put some weld through primer on the back. Um, and then I'm going to see about doing this inner bit before I weld that on, I think. Right, while I'm waiting on primer drying, I'm going to make a patch for this bit here. Um, roof underneath, it's not actually bad underneath, just really this bit on the surface. Uh, just this bit on the surface, so I'm going to go ahead and make a wee patch for that. Right, back in the workshop this morning, and I'm going to start repairing this bit. I'll start cutting out the rot just now. Right, there's that bit cut out then. Um, there's a replacement for it that I made the other day. It's got the weld through primer on the back, so I'm going to trim that down and get it to fit into the hole. I was going to butt weld that um, as a patch but because I could get access into the rear quarter panel um, I'm just going to weld it up as a backing piece and then cut a loy over it. I just think that will be easier, quicker. And there that is tacked in. 
horribly I may add, but it'll do what it's meant to do. Gonna weld it all the way around now. Some quite nice wet welds mixed in with some horrible fucking welds. Here we are with the welds cleaned up. I'm gonna I'll get a wee quick finger sander and then just to smooth it and then I'll give it some uh, bridging filler and cattle oil over the top. Right, I've jumped across to this bit which was needing patched where I thought it was but I've cleaned it up. Um, I looked inside at the panel to see if I could do the same thing and put a bit in behind which was what I was going to do but it looked solid at the back so I've cleaned it up and I think I'll get away with this one. Um, I'm just going to put some rust treatment on it and then some uh, marine grade primer for just now. So I'll call that a bonus. Save me an hour at least. Right, there's that bit with its first coat of cattle oil on it. Um, as you can see, that bit there is a bit in and out. That's not too bad. I've seen I've distorted it a little here, high spot of metal here. Um, but apart from that, it's looking alright, I will need another coat. You can see there's like lines in it, but I'm happy with it for now, so I'm going to put some paint on it. I will come back to it at a later date to tidy it up and do it properly, but for now to get us past this MOT, that is more than sufficient. Right, there's the rust treatment doing its thing. If you look down there like that, you could see my cat lying is out on that bottom lip. So that will need rectified at some point. Again, I was going to do a patch here, but I'm hoping that this is just going to clean up and I'll be able to do just another coat of the rust proofing. Uh, rust treatment, sorry. Right, there's that bit painted in. Um, as you can see, it's not perfect thing I showed you in the last bit of video when the paint was wet, the shine on it. A wee bit of work to do there yet, but that's for a later date. Um, I'm taking the beat back wheel off to do a bit of welding in here. Um, Daniel's joined me, he's working on the front end. Um, there he is under there, I don't know if you can see him. Um, he is, where's the wee hand? He is changing the um, drop links and the CV joint. And we now have discovered that we reckon the bushes are knackered as well on the... the Swinging arm. Um, the bit I am going to be welding is this in here. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up with the uh, knot wheel. And there's that bit, the inner arch for after a clean up. As you can see, it's pretty shitty. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut out all that rot just now. Um, I've cut the rot out of there just now, as you can see, um, this outer bit will go once I do the outer arch, but I've got to put the inner in first, so I made a panel, quite impressed with my fold around the corner there, which I did on the uh, bit of steel reinforcing that's outside that I used earlier, and that's it. It'll basically sit in there like that. So I'm going to go ahead and weld that. We'll clean it all up first and that obviously. Put some weld through primer on the back and then weld it in. I'll show you it when it's tacked in. Right, there we are tacked in. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and weld that all the way around now. And there we are welded in. I'm just going to give that a light clean up now. Um, obviously it's in a wheel arch so I'm not fussy about it being tidy or cataloy or any of that. Just cleaned up a bit, it's no sharp edges, rough edges. Right, I've just covered the whole thing in uh, brushable seam sealer. Um, and then I'm going to spray some uh, marine primer on it. There we are, primered up. 
that will do until I get some red in there. I have more dramas. This is a replacement alternator belt. As you can see, it's about half as thick as what it should be as well. I've only done this two days ago. Uh, Dinky's going to replace that bit, uh, the alternator pulley there. Hmm. Right, I'm going to do same repair again. Just on the driver's side this time. Kind of hoping it might not have to be as big. We'll see. That's gonna answer my question. Then we'll give that a clean up with a knot wheel just now then. And now we hope to do there as well. Fun fun fun. I mean, there's actually quite a bit more on this side than I thought. And this whole bit for a start. Right, I have this replacement piece made to go in there. But obviously that needs a, a lip on it. I don't have time to fart about with a hammer and that, trying to form it around like I did on the last side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to weld a strip right around that edge, around the curve, and then that will do for the lip. I don't have time anymore. I'm against the clock now. So that is what I meant there by... It's not exact, but it's close. So I'm just going to go ahead and weld that right the way around there now, just so it's good and strong. There we are, that's the inside. That's just penetration weld. That's the outside. Give that a clean up on like the lip side, if you know what I mean. So it's nice and flat for the to go against the nail that is still steaming. Still hot. Something like that. That might. <laughs> um. There's all that bit with all the rock cut out and nice and shiny to weld some patches in. Um, obviously, this is getting replaced at a later stage tonight. Um, I'm just going to do this patch just now and then I'll cut another patch to go over the top here. I'm just going to do it in patches because I'm getting lazy. Some weld through primer on the back. There's another simple patch made from a bit I've already well through primer previously and we'll just stick that over there like that kinda and just weld that in. I'm just going to do that first before this bit because this bit the well through primer is not dry yet. Alright there's that bit tacked in, oh shaky hand there's that bit tacked in now. Alright, there's that bit welded in. I'll do this edge when this next bit's in up against it. Right, there's that piece pieced in. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tack it. But I'll show you it tacked in. I forgot to uh, do a video of it tacked in, but there it is welded in. Definitely not neat. Absolutely shit. That will do it. Had to uh, build up loads of weld here to uh, bridge a gap that was there. Um, I'm going to have to do another wee patch in this corner. Patch that. All good. I'm going to clean up those welds now. Right, I've got that bit semi cleaned up. 
I'm going to jump across to this bit now. Uh, clean it up a bit. I'm just going to cut the rot, rot out for just now. There's me giving it some seam sealant and primer. I'm going to have to wait to do this bit just now. I'm going to hit nip away and borrow a spline tool for doing this alternator pulley. Um, I'll carry on when I come back. Oh, I've got some red, but I think it's taking a reaction with the zinc primer. Yeah. That's not so good. Right, this pulley here of the alternator has been a Jimmy Hunt to get off, and as you can see, it's not off. So we're going to have to build it. It's like half past eight, nearly nine o'clock at night. I'm going to have to build it back up using my very thin belt. Um, just to get mobile tonight um, and then come back and do it all again tomorrow but I'm going to stop the video here and um, I'll make another one to, for the outcome of this um, I know I still have welding to do at the back here in there I've not done anything I'm just still it's ready to be cut out and that's the bit that I pieced in which I'll probably have to take all that paint and seam sealer and that off because I ended up having to drive it when it was all still wet. So, mm, bit of a shit day, but these things can't be helped. Um, thanks for watching. Monkey hands.